Our next speaker reminds me of a quote that Nelson Mandela is probably, well, he's famous for many, but certainly I think this is the one that uh, comes up uh, quite often. The idea that education is the most, is the most powerful weapon with which uh, you can change the world. That's something Nelson Mandela said. And I think our next speaker certainly lives this out as his reality. He's an actuary, he's a management consultant, but he's also an educational entrepreneur. He's described as a bit of a Harry Potter look-alike, and he's got a passion for education. So in some ways, he uses education to create a little bit of magic. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Taddy Bletcher. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Great. Good morning to everybody. And how do we get Tabby to change her mind? Uh, we, we need a president like that. Um, if we can't get her to change her mind, how do we get to create the country that she spoke about, which I firmly believe we can create? And today for me is a celebration. It's a celebration because we're celebrating South Africans who don't stand for nonsense. We're celebrating South Africans who stand up, put, take their lives into their own hands, and make a beautiful country. And if we keep doing that, and if enough of us do it together, there's no walls, no obstacles, no rivers we cannot cross, and, and no change that we cannot bring in this country in the future. It's a great celebration for me today, uh, which I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why, but my mom turned 80 years old today. In fact, I've got to go home for the birthday party. And this is very exciting because 27 years ago, um, when I was 23, uh, she was diagnosed with stage four liver cancer and the doctors gave her only three months left to live. And she came home she sat her five children down and she said, I've got three months to live. And today we're celebrating her 80th birthday. <laughs> so about uh, 23 years ago now, when I was 27, I made a huge decision. Um, I was about to immigrate. I was on the verge of getting on a plane. I'd bought my air ticket. Um, and everything was packed up, 43 boxes in my mom's cellar, and I was on the verge of going to the United States. I'd organized two fantastic jobs in the States, two in Australia, two in New Zealand. Um, I had people phoning me every week saying, when am I coming to take up the job? And I kept saying, just wait, I'm on my way. And uh, ended up making the decision um, not to actually immigrate and to stay in South Africa and try and make a difference. And thank you. So 23 years has passed, and I'll tell you in 10 minutes what's happened in those 23 years. <laughs> and uh, we'll start off by watching a quick video, if you don't mind. Um, this video profiles three of our students, where they come from, their lives, what their dreams and aspirations are, and it was made about four years ago. And uh, so we can go ahead. My name is Jacob Sunomari. I'm a Marishi Institute student. I'm a fourth year student. My name is Gabelo. I come from Alex and I'm 26 years old. My name is Poncia Skasana. Um, I am a final year student in the Maharishi Institute and I work as a marketing intern. I grew up in Chartwell, just north of Johannesburg, um, Newlands area. Alex is, is, is compressed and there's a lot of people living in, in, in one place. Everybody shares a yard and they share um, amenities as well. We didn't have um, good role models at high school. 
The people who you looked up to were mostly the guys who hang around the car washes or the corners, the gangsters and stuff. We found criminals to be heroes and we looked up to them. It's a society where education is not important. There's not much that you can do outside of just working in a menial job. You're very lucky when you get um, an education or you get to further your education, like go to university or college. It felt like I was also going to go and be a cashier or go and work in the mine until a family friend uh, called me and told me about the institute. I heard about the Marish Institute on the radio. And one of the people that work here were talking about inviting students to come through for an open day. And I came to Maharish Institute when Dr. B was talking. What he said really resonated with me because he was offering free education, something that my father wanted me to do. He always encouraged us to get education. You can change your life. You can, you are, you have that potential. You can become something great. And I found that I, I really want to be part of it. So. I applied and I wrote the tests and I was lucky enough to get chosen. Getting into the institute, everyone was friendly, they treated each other like a family. People who want to know more about you, people care. You used to a place where nobody cared whether you came to class, whether you are there or not, it doesn't matter. I started learning transcendental meditation, started doing yoga. It helped me discover myself and what I wanted and how I was going to get it. The whole attitude towards life and towards education changed because I was now more focused. I was now prepared to change and become a greater person. It's given us that, that confidence, that extra boost and the energy. I now knew who I was and what I wanted. I value myself more because of, of what it does to me. Next year I would like to, to get an internship in an accounting firm because I would really love to pursue an, a career in accounting. I'm looking forward to going into corporate where I am hoping that I'll be of value to any organization that I'm going to be involved in. I want to become a management consultant with one of the top management consultants uh, companies in the world and hopefully become a professor one day. So I want to get a PhD and teach at university when I'm, when I'm much older. But hopefully I can also come back and teach here when, when I become a professor. I would also love to give back to the community through education. I want to become the role model that I never had back in high school where I can go back in my high school, the community and say, look, you don't have to end up here. Um, there's a better life out there. All you have to do is just be committed, be focused in education. Great. So you saw the story of three students, and really this is what we live for every day. And a lot of people say in South Africa, the youth are lost, uh, youth have got no hope, youth are violent, youth are this, youth are that, um, bad attitudes, etc. There's nothing wrong with the youth of South Africa. It's only the adults that we should look to who are bringing up these youth that anybody can complain about. These youth are brilliant, they are hardworking, they are passionate, they want to get ahead, they'll give anything to do it, uh, they want to do it the right way. We've now worked with so many, so many thousands of youth. When, when you look at each of these youth, they just represent the youth of, youth of South Africa. Cabello grew up 12 people in one room in Alex Township. Um, he finished high school, he sat at home basically for five years doing nothing with his life, couldn't get an opportunity. And you hear here, yeah, he wants to be a professor one day, he wants to do a PhD. And the great news 
is he, he came through our institute. Uh, he did so well in his degree. He got a full scholarship to go to the US and do his master's degree. He's going to stay on and do his PhD. Um, he's already been offered a job by Bain and & Company. And his whole future is bright ahead of him. Portia speaks here about growing up in Bethel and Pumalanga, um, having no opportunities other than to work down a mine or to fall pregnant, go on a government grant. Um, had a dream, just like every young person in this country. Came to the big city of Johannesburg, had never been in this province, um, ended up doing brilliantly at university. Uh, we got her a job in Accenture. Within six months, she was made full-time of her internship. Within one year, she was promoted to a first-line manager. Her salary went from 6,500 to 17 to 30,000. Um, she's now, it's now two and a half years later, she's earning over 35,000 rand, um, wor working in a really good job just two and a half years out. You see Jacob there. Just because of time, I won't tell you all about his story. Only person in his community go to um, higher education. He's already been studying internationally, working internationally um, on, on a leadership program with a manpower group. Anything is possible with the young people of this country. And when I decided I didn't want to emigrate and made that decision one night, two weeks away from leaving to give up my 1.3 million rand a year salary, it was really because I believe that <clears throat> the great leaders who brought political freedom in this country and brought us an economic democracy did their job. And the job for all of us now, exactly like Tabby was saying, is to create the economic democracy for all. And the only way we can do that ultimately is through education, entrepreneurship, developing the genius in our young people, developing their creativity, and believing they can do it, and then proving that they can do it. So a few, a few uh, weeks ago, I gave a talk at, at a school, and I was saying, I want to be the richest man in the world. And uh, these kids looked at me, it's quite a wealthy school, and they were thinking I'm trying to overtake their father or uh, what. <laughs> and, then, and then I said to them, who's the richest man in the world? Bill Gates, 90, million, uh, 90 billion dollars um, of, of wealth. And I said, my dream is to be richer than that. It's to create at least 100 billion dollars of wealth, over a trillion rands worth of wealth, but not for myself, through at least 100,000 young people going through education, using their potential, who collectively will be wealthier than Bill Gates or anyone else in the world. Will they remain in South Africa when they get their education? Or will they leave the country and make money elsewhere and live happily ever after? No, do they owe it something that they can put back into South Africa? Thank you. Show me one example that any one of these qualified people have done, even one house in South Africa where a million people are starving. Okay, I could give you... I hope so. Thank you. Thank you. Very good point. Um, I'll, I'll just say quickly, we've got a, a, a policy where every single student um, has to run the school. They have to clean. They have to cook. They have to sort out their own library, computer labs, everything else. Older students work with younger students. And then every single student, when they're working, has to fund another student to get an education. And they're doing it. So today, um, we've put over 17,000 unemployed youth through education. Collectively, they earn over 1 billion rand in combined salaries. If, if we never do another student being educated, those students, if they just keep their jobs, they'll earn 27 billion rand uh, in their working careers. So ultimately, this is completely possible. We set out to prove that no young person in this country should be left behind. Everybody's got the potential if they're given the chance. I got interested in this whole thing because I grew up in quite a poor family, and my family were um, immigrants from Eastern Europe escaping persecution with Nazism, and they came to South Africa, and South Africa for them was coming to a free country, and they came here with the shirts on their backs that had absolutely nothing, um, and we grew up, five children, uh, four of us, me and my three older brothers, we slept on the floor on foam mattresses, we had nothing, but in my family, the religion we had was education. Every single cent that was made in my family was ultimately put us through school, any books, anything about learning. Like that quote of Mandela that education is the thing that can change the world, the most powerful weapon. My father ultimately put 34 people through university. Every single went, cent in the family went on that. Not on clothing, not on TVs, not on any luxuries, not on holidays, just on education. But if you look at those 34 people today, we can see that everything changed for our family. So ultimately, this dream now 
is to help 100,000 at least South Africans just to prove that it's possible. And as we grow collectively together and develop our youth, we don't have to focus so much on, 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 on the noise around us that Tabby spoke about us. Let's dream and create together the leaders of the future that we want. It's absolutely possible. Um, another project we're working on is our school system is teaching young people to be robots. It's teaching them via rote learning. Um, a wonderful project we're working on with the Department of Basic Education is to put project-based learning into the whole South African school system to teach young people how to be more creative, how to solve problems, how to think uh, for themselves. And ultimately, this is something that we hope over the next 15, 20 years can start to bring change in our country. So we don't produce puppets, we produce thinkers, we produce people who really can take the future into their own hands. And guys, I'm optimistic. When my mom was diagnosed 27 years ago that she had three months left to live, she said to the doctor, bugger you, I cannot die, I've got four children, and I'm going to build a life for myself and my family. And she changed everything in her life. She changed her diet, she started meditating, as you heard on the video, taught me about all these things, and, and, and so on. And she changed her life completely. And I want us today collectively to say, in this beautiful Leaders A day, bugger all those who want to destroy the future of this country. Because we the people are not going to allow it. And let's just give every fiber of our beings every day, all day, across all race groups, all spectrums, all ages, and let's claim our country and make it great. Thank you.